tale today that speeds can rise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. persons. 
and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the times that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm number one. This can be found on page 585 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 585. We will read responsibly responsively <laughs> by holders. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They are to sing the law of the Lord, and they are to take They are like trees, planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. And it is not so with the wicked, they are like the shafts of the moon Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. Our second reading comes from the first epistle of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
They were yours and you gave them to me. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord of Christ. in many ways. 
The Gospel lesson that we read today is part of what's called the Farewell Discourses. So the Gospel lesson that we read today actually took place before Jesus' trial and arrest and death and resurrection. These, in John, John goes through, there's a whole series of things, things that Jesus wants to convey to his disciples. And no doubt, as the disciples were gathered, after Jesus had ascended into heaven and they were waiting for the promised Holy Spirit, no doubt they talked together about the things that Jesus had said to them when he was with them. And it, it reminds me, this gospel lesson reminds me of those, those times in life when I've been with people who have lost loved ones. And one of the ways that they kind of try to figure out what to do is sometimes they ask themselves, what would so-and-so want me to do? You know, what would this person that really loved me want me to do at this point? And those kind of insights from those ones that have loved us can be helpful in our decision making. These seasons in life when we are kind of betwixt and between can be challenging. I mean, look at us today. You know, it's like, where are we? You know, where is everybody for one thing? And I think that's why I particularly gravitated towards the cult, the collect today, the prayer that says to God, do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us. And of course, we can pray this because we're the other side of Pentecost. You know, we're living in the post-Pentecost time. And it seems to me that we're in a transitional time as a church. I mean, even today I feel betwixt and between because yesterday we just got the directions from the diocese giving us new directions about, you know, because of the light of the changes that happened this week and the CDC coming out with new instructions. And so Barry and I will be talking this week, but we're not even sure what kind of people came today, like, do I wear my mask? Do I not wear my mask? You know, we're in this kind of what do we do kind of season. And we have, of course, resumed our worship. We're meeting together with some changes, social distancing at this time, although we may be discontinuing that. But there are still some members who still don't feel safe to return to church. We were worshipping together, aren't we? The faithful, those of us who've been coming, and some of you come every week, to worship and uh, be together, and yet we've not been able to do things like have fellowship time together. You know, I used to love, I don't know about you, but after the service, we'd go into the parish hall, we'd have a chance to sit together, eat together, talk together. You don't get much of a conversation on that porch way there. It's hard to get, you know, just to be able to really visit with one another. I've noticed along the way, some, kind, some weeks people kind of talk by the side of their cars to somebody else, but we've missed it, haven't we? Let alone all the fun things the other day I saw the microphone on the top of the cupboard in the vesting room and I thought of those times where we've done bingo, we've had meals together, you know, we've had those social times because one of the values of this church is that we are, we, we, we want to be friendly and we enjoy being together in social times as well as worshipping together. And that's been hard, hasn't it? We've had that all taken away from us. And so we've lost in these in this last year, so much of our community life. And some of us might wonder, will normal life ever return? You know, will we ever get back to what we were? These times, betwixt and between, I call them, they're a chance for us, I think, to really lean into God. I said to Mary this morning, I have real concerns. I'm sure you do. How can we continue to go forward if we don't continue to reach out to people and if people don't return? You know, just very practically in a church, you need a certain number of people to be able to do the things that require the church to function. And so, yeah, we have some wonderings right now. Some, your vestry's been, tell, you know, turning those things over in their mind. But I think it's a real invitation for us. In this season and the next month, which will feel a little bit betwixt and between, our snowbirds have gone, some people haven't returned yet, and we're not exactly sure how all this is going to work out, that we can lean into God. For God's comfort in our grief. 
some of us are grieving. And some of us are grieving just the losses of the life that we've lost this last year. The people we've lost, but also the experiences that we've lost, the times that we've lost that we won't get back. Times when we might have been with family, times when we might have been there, times when we might have gathered together. Some of us are still grieving, and we need God's comfort. And some of us, quite honestly, have been impacted by this isolation that we just are not doing as well as we were. Just not being able to get out and be around people has taken a toll on many of our congregational members. And so it's a time to lean into God and ask for God's comfort. And also to ask for God's strength. When we feel weak, we're like, how are we going to kind of get life back together? How is this going to be for us all? So we're in a time of waiting, aren't we? Just like the disciples were in a time of waiting. And they were waiting for the Spirit, the gift that was promised to them. God promised, life will return. You're not waiting in vain, life will return. It may not look like the life that you had before. There may be some very different forms to your life in this time. But life will return. At home, I have a, I call them plaques, a little plaque. You know, I love all those things with words on that you put it in your home and you're hanging on your walls. And I have a little plaque and it's, um, it's a little sort of bar. And on the plaque, it's, they've carved these two cats are hanging off this bar like this, like with their one paw. They're just hanging with this one paw. And the look on their faces is like, Yikes, you know, I'm kind of hanging on with all my mind. Am I going to be okay? They're both there together, hanging in there. And that's what the words say on that plan. Hang in there. Now, it's not a scripture quote. I just want you to know that. That's not a, a quote from scripture. But I think it's the spirit of scripture. Hang in there. Lord, do not leave us comfortless. But send your Holy Spirit to comfort us and to strengthen us. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and turn to page 358 as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten and unmade, of the Almighty of the Father, through him.
in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For our presiding bishop and our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For Jerry, Harry, Gordon, who live in health care facilities. For Richard and Mary, Anne Marie, Tricia, Don, Sam, Linda, Donna, Gerard, Marilyn, Trish, Fern, Daniel, Friar Mark Vicker, Vicker, Diane, Jim, Paul, Franklin, and his family, Sam, and Marianne, Dwayne, Janet, Ron, Mike, Lloyd, Olive, Norma, Hank, Heather, Mark, Dan B. Sr., Arlene, Sandy, Linda, Pastor Vega, Tyson, Claudia, Grace, Donna, and Carolyn, Dick, the Reed family, Olivia, Karen, and Rusty. We pray especially for Betsy and her family at this time as they grieve the loss of Betsy's mom, Florence. We also continue to pray for the Church of God as they begin a new season in life of the Church here in Corpus Christi. In the diocesan cycle, we pray for the Church of the Advent, Donnellan, and Holy Faith Church, Donnellan. In the Anglican cycle, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, O merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet one another with a gesture of peace. Of peace. Of peace.
Please have a seat. Well, as I mentioned, um, we just got uh, uh, news of the new guidelines that Barry and I will be talking about this week, and then we'll send an email out and let you know what they will be as far as mask wearing and social distancing. There'll be some things that we won't be changing at this time, um, like communion in one kind. Um, so, but Barry and I will uh, just uh, talk about that and discern what's the best way forward for our congregation. Um, but it feels like things are starting to return, doesn't it? It does. It feels, it feels more hopeful, doesn't it? So we'll let you know. Next week, as I mentioned, is uh, Pentecost. And so um, it's traditional in the Episcopal Church, and in others actually, to wear red on Pentecost Sunday. So if you feel like joining in that, and you'd like to wear something red next week, um, I've, uh, I'm really indebted to Betsy. We decided that we would have the choir, a few members of the choir that are with us still. Uh, they're going to be performing for us, singing for us as part of the service next week, so I thank that for them. That would be lovely. Um, they normally, the choir normally take a break in the summer anyway, because we have snowbirds and, and also it gives the musician a break too. So we won't be having choir over the summer we will have some special music at different times. So next week is a lovely chance to, for us to have something of what feels more like a, a normal service. So it will be really lovely. So come with that with your red on if you have red. Um, I also wanted to let you know, um, you may not have noticed from the bulletin, but um, I was just got my, uh, uh, granted my doctoral degree on Friday. I graduated. Yay! <laughs> Um, it was a virtual commencement, so um, we were at home and um, my sons were there and they did the hooding ceremony for me when it came to uh, the uh, actual time for that. Um, my, one of my cats, Zoe, also participated. She kept looking across the screen where the computer was, so we got her attending as well. But I feel very, very grateful. I'm so grateful, you know, to have done that. Yes? So, uh, what are we uh, address you as now? Dr. Well, Dr. Dr. Ma or Dr. Ma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me that the other day. I think I prefer that my title there, if anyone, is the Reverend Doctor. However, I've always been Mother Amanda here. So, to me, it's, but thank you, yes. Um, I feel very grateful. Um, my uh, my uh, doctoral pro uh, is in a... Uh, Congregational development, and I, what I looked at particularly was how does the location of a church affect that church's sense of identity and mission? So, you know, think back over your life have, when you've been to churches that maybe are local churches, other times you've maybe driven to churches, but where, where does the idea of God being in a particular place? And I looked at things like in scripture where it says, you know, seek the welfare of the city because in its welfare will be your welfare. That God intends for us to be a rooted people. But where we live is important. I don't know about you, but I always pray when I move house, you know, place me in the neighborhood where you want me because somehow we're to be about God's work in the natural place. So, but I'm glad to have finished with that and tell you after six years. So, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, this week, do we have any uh, birthdays? Anybody having a birthday this week? And is anybody, or is anybody celebrating a special anniversary of any kind? Or do we have any travelers? No, so I think we're just here. Well, let's turn and celebrate together the Holy Eucharist. And I'll say the offertory sentence this time because I've been forgetting it for some reason. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, the Savior Jesus Christ, and you have led us to spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's turn to the back of our prayer book and say together the prayer for our church. Almighty God, my church is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. Its views will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great works if I work. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring people into its worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a church of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, and a church with a noble spirit. If I who make it what it is, and fill it with these same qualities, therefore, with the help of God, I shall dedicate myself to the task of being all things that I want my church to be. Bless us my journey, Lord God, that I might fulfill this pledge to fulfill the church. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's sing together, crown him with many crowns. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God.